When I hop into bed at night, I sleep like a baby. I really do. Almost every single night, it is lights out for me. And the other day, I received an email from a gal named Claudia, and she asked me if I could share any sleep tips or suggestions or habits or things I do or don't do before bed that could help her get a good night's sleep. So as I was typing my email reply to Claudia, I said to her, you know what? This is a really great video topic because I gave her so many tips. I counted them up. I have 20 sleep tips, habits that I practice in my everyday life every single day that ensure I get a quality night's sleep every single night. And so I have 20 tips and there's actually a 21st tip, a bonus tip, if you will, that I'm going to share with you at the end of the list. So here we go, 20 tips on how you can sleep like a baby. Number one, my phone is never in my bedroom and neither is my laptop. Never, ever, ever. When I go to bed at night, I plug my phone up all the way on the other side of the house. It's charging in my utility room. It's never in my bedroom. I don't want to be woken up by a text or an email or a phone call. Now, don't get me wrong, my kids know how to get in touch with me if there's an emergency, but my phone is just not in my bedroom. I don't want the distraction. I don't want to think about it sitting next to me. I don't want the temptation to pick it up and, you know, scroll on Instagram or YouTube. So I put it far, far away. And so I never am distracted by my cell phone. And speaking of phones, I don't scroll on my phone after 7.30 at night. Now, I go to bed about 10 o'clock, 10.30. So 7.30 is my cutoff time for anything that has a blue light, social media, YouTube, my laptop, or my cell phone. I find that if I look at those things, something about my mind races when I get in bed. The blue light that's emitted from staring at your phone or your computer can really stimulate your brain and can keep you awake. So I have a cutoff time. I put my phone down at 7.30 and it ensures that my mind isn't racing when I go to bed. When my husband and I get in bed at night, we do turn on the television and we watch a very short, happy, funny sitcom. Not a drama, nothing that's going to get me worked up, not anything lengthy that's going to catch my attention and I'm going to feel like I have to stay awake or I'm going to miss something. We love to watch old school sitcoms. Friends, Cheers, Everybody Loves Raymond, The Golden Girls, Will and Grace, just funny non-committal sitcoms. If I fall asleep while it's on, who cares? I didn't miss anything. I've probably seen it anyway. We have it on, you know, 25 minutes at most, and then off it goes. I sleep best when it is cold in my bedroom. We have a digital thermostat that every night around 10 o'clock, it automatically starts dropping the temperature to 67 degrees. 67 degrees is my happy temp. That is where I sleep best. So before you go to bed tonight, turn down your thermostat. Digital thermostats are super cheap. You can get them, you know, fancy or not fancy. Just get one that has a program on it so you can set it on a timer to get cold before you go to bed at night. And have you ever gotten in bed at night and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've forgot to do this or I've got to remember to do that tomorrow. That stimulates your mind and it will keep you awake. So before I put my cell phone down for the night, I always have a little to-do list. Did you know the notes app on your phone will let you put a checklist and every time you need to mark something off of your list, tap it, it'll check it off and move it to the bottom of the list. So that way I never forget anything. I've got my to-do list and my mind isn't thinking about all the things that I need to do when I wake up in the morning. This is a big one and I know a lot of people are going to completely disagree with me, but I don't allow my pets to sleep on the bed. I don't. So we have two dogs. One dog has his own bed. He sleeps in his bed at the foot of our bed and our other dog sleeps under the bed. I do not allow pets on my bed because they want to lay on top of me. I don't have room. I can't move. They're on top of the covers. It just wakes me up if there's ever a pet in the bed. And so years ago, my husband and I said, that's it. No more pets in the bed. And we sleep so much better for making that decision. And I know it's tough. I know you want to cuddle with your pets, but spend your awake hours on the couch, snuggling with your dogs or your cats, giving them as much love as you can. But when you go to bed, they need to go to bed too. Several years ago, my husband and I bought a new mattress and we also got an adjustable 
bed frame. My husband really, really wanted one of these, and I thought, you know, I, you know, I would just kept thinking about those commercials that you saw back in the 80s with the 90-year-old couple laying in bed with their bed propped up, and that was just all I could think of and thought that was so weird. But when we went mattress shopping, my husband talked me into getting it, and now I love it. So every night we slightly elevate the head part of our bed and my husband and I both sleep so much better. Now we're not sitting up straight. We're just at a very, very slight incline, but my husband snores and when we're elevated a bit, he doesn't snore. It is almost, eh, we'll, we'll call it 80% stopped his snoring. And for some reason, I do sleep better myself when I'm at a little incline. So if you've ever considered getting a new bed frame or a new mattress, look into an adjustable bed frame with a remote control. Are you a side sleeper? I certainly am. Well, have you ever gotten into bed and you're laying on your side and after a couple of minutes, your hip starts to hurt or your knees hurt where they're being pressed together? Well, that was so me for a really long time until I discovered a body pillow. My husband and I sleep with a king size pillow. You can get body pillows that are a lot longer, but this is not standard or queen. It is a king size pillow and we snuggle up to this. So when I lay on my side, I wrap my arm around the pillow and I put it between my knees. So it keeps the pressure off of my hip. It keeps my knees from knocking together and having my arm wrapped around it is really comfortable for my arm and shoulder. It's not just slung down across my side and I swear by sleeping with a body pillow. So trust me, if you have never tried to snuggle with the body pillow, give it a try. Don't let your hair wake you up. <laughs> what? Your hair? Yes. Don't let your hair wake you up. If I go to bed with my hair hanging down loose, because I'm a side sleeper, my hair gets in my face. And every time I turn over, my hair is in my face. And it wakes me up and it drives me bananas. So when I go to sleep, I take a very light little ponytail, put my hair on the top of my head so when I'm laying down, no matter what I do, my hair is out of my face and off of my neck and I sleep so much better that way. This next tip is really important for me. Over a year ago, I started intermittent fasting. I eat during an eight hour window of the day and for 16 hours, I don't eat or drink anything. So my cutoff window for eating is 7 p.m. I go to bed about 10 or 10.30, so I never eat after 7 p.m. Almost never, never, or I try my best not to. There are some times when my husband will talk me into a late night ice cream, but that is not very often. And I'll tell you, when he does talk me into it, I pay for it. If I eat something late at night, or definitely sweets, I know that I sleep bad and I will have bad dreams. So seven o'clock is really my cutoff for eating and drinking because if I drink stuff after 7 p.m., I have to get up and pee. And I sleep so much better with this rule because my, my body has had time to digest my dinner and kind of be on its way to being empty by the time that I go to bed. And it really, really has improved the quality of my sleep. Quality, comfortable bedding is critical to get a good night's sleep. If your bed is made up of scratchy sheets and a heavy comforter and, and not a good pillow and your neck is all turned over like this because your pillow's flat, you're just not going to get a good night's sleep. So look into great sheets, a comfortable blanket, and a fantastic pillow. If you need suggestions, I will put my favorites in the description box. I have also done a video on affordable yet luxurious bedding items and I'll link it right up here. What do you sleep in at night? I'm a woman and I'm in menopause so I'm sleeping in bamboo pajamas. Bamboo is the best material, the best fabric that you can sleep in for night sweats, to control your body temperature, to ensure that you aren't getting too hot. It's breathable, it is organic, it is fantastic. So I sleep in nothing but bamboo pajamas. If you want some pajama suggestions, I will put them in the description box below because there is a brand of bamboo pajamas sold on Amazon that is so cute, so affordable, they hold up so well. I own about, I don't know, 12 pair of them and I sleep in bamboo pajamas every night and it is critical to me getting a good night's sleep. What about lighting in your bedroom? This is a big one. 
I'm in my 50s. I'm pretty old school. Our house is not really a smart home. We don't have all the bells and whistles. We invested in an Echo Show so that we could talk to Alexa. And we purchased smart light bulbs for all of the lamps in our home. And it does three wonderful things for us. When we go to bed at night, we have a routine set up. All I have to do is say, Alexa, get ready for bed. And she will turn off all of the lights in our house the way that we have it set up. And she dims the bedroom lights to 10%. So it kind of starts the sleepy mood in our bedroom. When I'm actually in bed and we're finished watching our little funny show and it's time to go to sleep, I say, Alexa, good night. And she turns off every single light. I don't have to get out of bed to turn off the lights. I just say the words and it is done automatically for me. It is so wonderful. And she will also wake us up in the morning and this is a bonus. Our Philips Hue smart bulbs are synced to Alexa. So in the morning, 10 minutes before my husband's alarm clock is set to go off, the lamps in our bedroom will gradually come on and they will increase in brightness for 10 minutes. Then the actual alarm clock goes off. We're starting to wake up by the light without having to be startled out of sleep by a blaring alarm clock. We have an echo show in our bedroom. That is the hub. That is the brains of Alexa. And I talk to her and ask her questions all the time. So if you don't have a smart home and you're not familiar with any of this, it really is very simple to set it up. Believe me, I am not a techie person and we were able to set up our bulbs and get routines set up so, so easy. It is critical that you go outside and feel the sunshine. See the sunshine. Have natural light on your face every single day. That is what keeps your body in sync. It regulates your sleep cycle. If you're inside all day long in a dark, dim room, your body never fully wakes up. Therefore, it never really wants to go to sleep. So I make it a point to go outside every day and be in the sunlight, the natural sunlight. However, in the winter months when I can't do that, I have a happy light. It is a light that you shine in the direction of your face. It keeps your body rhythm going just like you have been outside in the natural sunlight. I sit in front of my happy light every day for at least six months out of the year when it's too cool for me to go outside or if it's a very gray day I have to have my happy light and I highly highly recommend the happy light if you live somewhere that you cannot get outside and be in the natural daylight the next big tip is a pretty big one in my opinion I don't get in my bed during the day I don't sit on my bed. I don't lay on my bed. Make your bed a special place. Make it somewhere that you want to go at night. If you lay around and you wall around in your bed all day and you sit on it and you read and you treat it like a couch, then it's not a special place. You want it to feel inviting and new and somewhere that you look forward to going at night. Make sure that you have a big enough mattress. I have a husband. He takes up a lot of room. He always has a leg kicked over on my side of the bed. So we have a king size mattress so that I have plenty of room. I can toss, I can turn, I can lay on my back. He can stick his foot over on my side of the bed, but I don't feel crowded. I have room for myself. I have space to move and turn and breathe. And a king size mattress, in my opinion, is an absolute must if you have a partner in your bed. We bought a new mattress about five years ago now and it's available on Amazon. I'll link it below if you're looking for a new mattress. Make sure you are active during the day. Yes, get out and do something. Don't sit around. Don't be a couch potato. Move your body. That will make you in and of itself get a good night's sleep. Make your bed every day. I have been preaching this. Make your bed because it is so important that your bed is inviting. You want your bed to look good. You want it to feel good. You don't want wrinkled sheets and pillows in the floor to just to be a big mess. You want it to be a place that welcomes you. I am a firm believer in getting up early. I get up about 6 o'clock, maybe 6.30 in the morning, and I spend my day doing things. So when I wake up because I got a really good night's sleep, I am full of energy. I am such a morning person and I go and I do and I think and I plan and I just, you know, spend my day living my best life. But by bedtime, I am 
ready for bed. I have headed on the downhill slide. My body is tired. My mind is tired. I'm tired. So give your body the signal that, hey, it's daytime. I'm up. I'm moving. I'm awake. And so when it's nighttime, your body knows it's time to go to sleep. And then here is my last tip. And this is a personal tip. Don't get me wrong. And it is for the women who are watching. When you go to bed at night, don't sleep in any undies. It is really good for you to get some air, some to have some breathability, to not have on tight pants and be sweaty and restricted. You just need to breathe. And I truly believe that is an important factor in why I sleep so well. And if you've never tried it, absolutely give it a try. So now I have shared with you 21 tips and habits to ensure that you get a really good night's sleep. And so if you were listening to my list thinking, I don't do any of those things, give it a try. It's not going to hurt you. I promise it will only help you. And I bet you, you'll be sleeping like a baby. See you later.